Hey everyone, I'm back from DC. My first trip to District E, which I'm super excited to show to you guys uh, once I start going there monthly. And I think the first one will be in early April. So make sure you catch those streams when I make it back to DC. All right, let's get into Team of the Season because obviously I wasn't here for the release of it. I watched all of the comments and in my Discord, all the talk about it and uh, wasn't uh, wasn't really as well received as prior years. So in this video, we'll go over all of the cards, all of the sets, the value, all of that. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we'll kick things off with the 93 Olin Zellweger from the Kamloops Blazers. He's 5'10", 182, obviously having a terrific year, including a really good world junior. So he's a 5'10", 182 left-hand defenseman, which is obviously pretty tough on the back end. We know that if we're trying to build competitive teams or give yourself a shot at the best chance of winning, especially if you're in Division 1 and to having a smaller defenseman you need certain things to kind of make up for that he's got gold truculent so that does make up for the fact that he is a little bit smaller does it make him the best no but at least helps out with the deficiency in size and uh and height he has unstoppable force elite edges heat seeker one t as well as send it really all of these abilities you don't need to activate it all but remember if you are going to make this card or get this card he's gonna have to have truculence on to be worth it unless you're playing squad battles obviously but if you're going up against other opponents, it's going to give yourself a big disadvantage if you have a 5'10", 182 defenseman that can't really knock any of the high 99 overall players off the puck, especially if they have unstoppable force. Now, obviously, with these team of the season cards, they will upgrade for free, so that's always going to be the big benefit of them. He's got great skating already. Now, will he receive more? He is going to probably go on a big playoff run in the WHL, so I would anticipate that he will receive pretty regular updates, but again, at 86 seven body checking he needs truculence activated so you have to put the six ability points in and just kind of pencil them in no matter what if you do get this card Next, we've got the 93 Logan Thompson, 6'4", 205, with three great synergy slots. Again, the plus three uh, to each synergy is phenomenal. Obviously, that's a huge boost because, you know, you already have over halfway to each synergy that you want, and especially if it's three skating synergies, that makes it really easy, especially because most of the Master Set players, they didn't receive, like, Fly the Zone or Workhorse or Spark. It was usually one of, like, the smaller ones, like Distributor or Buzzing, uh, so this is going to be helpful for you guys he's got gold no timer i'm not a huge fan of no timer because one timers have been stopped very easily uh since the launch of this game with the human goalie animations however i do really like light work there's nothing wrong with this card six foot four two oh five with great abilities it's you know it's a goaltender though in nhl 23 guys this is the game where it's mattered the least uh, in terms of what you're rocking in net, and that's saying something considering goaltenders have always been in kind of a mess. Mason McTavish is up next, 93 overall. He's got three skating synergies, which is great. Six foot two, 13 centerman. He's only got 88 on the draw, though, and that's pretty low. Uh, so you're going to want to, if you do get this card, you're going to want to acquire him and put him on the left hand side or make him a winger. Sorry. 92 speed, 91 acceleration. So that is quite low at this stage of the game for the cost that it's going to take to get. Get him or if you get him in a set that kind of thing he does have unstoppable force which is great gold close quarters is awesome silver quick draw does make up for his lower face-off rating but there is a lot of high 90s face-off players that have quick draw as well so kind of negates the point there silver truculence is great tape to tape increase crash you really don't need it all so the thing about mason mctavish is he's not getting a playoff run so you got to keep that in mind he's not going to get a chance at regular updates you're going to be at the mercy of ea uh for giving him regular updates update so because his skating so low unless you're a Ducks fan or you know you want one of the younger good players in the league this would be one that I would avoid in terms of buying we've got our female from the release the 94 Alina Muller sit five foot six 143 centerman obviously when it comes to gameplay online versus of their opponents really struggles with the smaller size and weight and that's just going to be the case until EA figures out what to do about that gold unstoppable force really helps but it's not really going to do much because of the where we're at in the game once progression goes up uh, and the smaller players that are faster they lose their advantage be 
because they can't go higher than 99 and all the big players they start to catch up and that's just how it is it's how it's always been in hockey ultimate team he's got close she's got close quarters as well as elite edges which is a fine ability combo but again it's going to be very difficult as the game goes along uh to utilize her so it would be really tough when we talk about sets if you were to get alina muller uh as well as let's say mctavish and we're going to talk about the sets in just a little bit Quinn Hughes is up next, the 5'10", 180-pound left-handed defenseman. Great a bit, great synergies, honestly. Uh, almost max speed and acceleration, which is huge, 5'10", 180. So much smaller, a lot like Kale McCarr. Does have silver truculence, though, so that is going to help. Gold Unstoppable Force is interesting on cards like this uh, because you're able to go end-to-end -end in NHL 23 pretty easily. If you're able to straight line on the breakout and get kind of a step, you can really utilize Unstoppable Force, but an 8 ability point, it's going to be awfully tough with how good some of the other cards are with their abilities. Troculence is a must if you do have this card, uh, but I think he's going to be fine. A lot like a left-handed version of Kale McCarr, I think as the game goes along and gets into the you know April May, uh, you're not going to see much of an advantage because you'll get the big defensemen uh, that are going to have the same abilities and same skating. That being said, he is the first card that you can use a master set player for, and again we'll talk about that in the sets. Matty Beniers, the uh, the John Cena version, you can't see him. 5'2", 178. We did just get an MSP for him in the next-gen event. Uh, obviously, a good card. 6'2", 178. I will say that this build has always kind of struggled in NHL. I'm talking like uh, Elias Pedersen as well as Mitch Marner unless they have Unstoppable Force. I would have loved to see that on this Matty Beniers card, uh, but honestly, he's not going to have that. He's going to play a lot like Wayne Simmons, and if you think back to the All-Star uh, All event, I used that Wayne Simmons card, and while he was tall he got thrown around very easily so something to keep in mind gold elite edges is great as is close quarters i think close quarters might be one of the best abilities in the game for the remainder of the game uh but 94 speed 96 acceleration he's gonna win the calder it looks like unless there's something crazy that happens he's gonna win the calder so he's gonna get an awards card basically very quickly he will get uh, a high 90s card so that is something to keep in mind then we've got the 96 jack hughes 511 175 we did just get his clutch moments msp and that does play into his jack hughes cards gold unstoppable force is perfect for him that's going to make him a lot more viable for a little bit longer as well as elite edges the rest of his abilities i would probably avoid i think you're better uh, you're better off spending your ability points in different spots 96 speed 98 acceleration he's going to get a 99 very quickly so his skating will jump all the way up as will his body checking uh it's at 90 right now with gladiator so just keep that in mind you can play him at center as well with 93 on the draw and you could go thief instead of gladiator uh, to help that out a little bit more but i think that he's probably better on the wing and you're going to need unstoppable force i think to really take advantage of this card but he's still going to be very good his shot is always underrated like it's always better than his um than his uh, a uh, a attributes indicate so uh, just keep that in mind i've always found his wrist shot to be like automatic and then we've got the 99 noah dobson six foot four 194 right-handed defenseman obviously one of the best cards in the game for the longest time because of his fantasy card that did hit 99 very early he is 99 across the board with gold 1t silver send it shut down seeing eye stick him up and heat seeker uh, honestly, no truculence is kind of tough, but he's already 6'4", 194. I'm thinking about in terms of other 99 cards, because a lot of these team of seasons, guys, you got to go in thinking and knowing they're going to go up to 99. Gold 1T just hasn't really worked all that much. I did notice it a little bit on Shea Weber, and he had 99 slap shot power and accuracy. It's just six ability points. If you have a stacked lineup, it's tough to do. However, Silver Shutdown is probably the best out of these. Uh, the reason being is it acts like stick him up as well as truculence on the rush and the way it determines the rush is kind of broken so you won't get it when they're cycling in your zone but you'll get it more than just off the rush so uh shutdown would be what i would go and i've kind of like seeing eye especially if you go for a lot of tip shots uh it seems like it freezes the goalie uh so just something to keep in mind there but obviously noah dobson the best card of the bunch all right guys now let's talk about sets and the value of what you're gonna pay for these cards so you're gonna need 35 team of the season collectibles they're going for about 16,000 per so to make a choice set one of two on trade 560,000 coins for a choice of these cards right now and like I 
mentioned, with the options available, it's really, really risky. Again, if you got McTavish as well as Muller or Logan Thompson, that's really rough. Now, obviously, if you got Dobson, Jack Hughes, even even Quinn as well as Matty Beniers, that wouldn't be terrible. But because there's three options that are nowhere close to 560,000 coins per, um, I just don't see the value here. Now, there are some I want to talk about these ones. So if you wanted to make Quinn Hughes, the one thing that is good is that it, they are bringing back Master Set trade-ins for it. So now Quinn Hughes... It's going to cost you, I'm going to do the math for you guys. Again, I like to do that so you guys don't have to. If you don't have Quinn Hughes and you wanted to make him, let's say, he's going to build, if you had to straight up build him, 125,000 coins with each collectible for about 5,000. So it'll be 125,000 coins plus the 464 to get the 30 team of the season collectibles for 589,000 coins. So that's about 30,000 more than the complete random choice pack. Honestly, I think that's a better value because at least you know you're getting a usable card as opposed to the other three that I just don't think are even close. But you want to keep in mind that, you know, they're tradable options, all right? So if you were to go and take a look at the auction house, make sure you're checking in and seeing what these are going for. People have kind of figured it out, though. But if they you ever see one up for less than 125,000 coins, that's a good value. You're saving some coins there. The Fantasy Hockey trade-in for Noah Dobson, I would 100% do this. The reason is, is you essentially get a free 99 that you can trade in at a later time for a ton of collectibles. There was this trade-in for Team of the Year, uh, last team of the season. I would definitely recommend doing this. If you had Dobson tradable, that's tough. But I mean, if you've had him this whole time, you're probably going to want to just hold on especially because he lost a little bit of value because there is a team of the season version out there this one has silver truculence though so it's still going to be a better option in my opinion all right now on to Beneers, where it starts to actually be a half decent value for making this card and trading it in so if you don't have a maddie Beneers and you need to make him from scratch it's going to cost you about two hundred and ninety-five thousand coins to build him all the way up with next gen collect collectibles which isn't too bad again if you get each collectible for about 5,000 per but with 18 team of the season collectibles that's another 288,000 for a total of 583,000 now again that's about 20k more than what the random choice set would be but you're guaranteeing yourself Matty Beneers who I think is going to get a 99 fairly shortly because he's going to win the Calder so that's not a bad option However, clearly the best set right now is making this 95 Jack Hughes and then trading in 17 with the season collectibles. Right now, it's going to cost you about 430k to build up and make Jack Hughes. And then another 112,000 to get the seven team of the season collectibles for a total of 542,000 coins. So again, Jack Hughes is going to get a 99 fairly shortly. Now, is he going to be among the best cards at the end of the game? No, because he's not as huge, but he does have gold unstoppable force and an insane shot in game. I think this is actually a pretty decent value when you compare the cost to actually making the other team of the seasons or taking your shot at the choice pack. The other thing I want to mention, guys, Guys, is if you have Beneers or Hughes already, like you've already maxed them out, I would go ahead and make their team of the season. However, I wouldn't do it just yet because EA took such a hit on the lackluster way that they did team of the season instead of releasing all team of the season cards for the young stars. And once they did eight and it looks like they're going to release them a little bit slower over this week, it does appear that they've listened to the community, heard all you guys on Reddit, Twitter, comments, videos, Twitch chats, all of that. And it looks like they're going to be more aggressive with the amount of cards they release for the Young Stars event on Tuesday, Wednesday, as well as Friday, I think. I don't know. No confirmation there, but I just saw that's what it seems to appear. So I would wait to make any of the team of the seasons just yet because it looks like you're going to get a lot of the week one cards pretty sh pretty shortly. So we'll wait and see what comes out for Young Stars. There obviously are a few other big names that you could get. Um, so again, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I I just wanted to give you guys all of the math. Don't forget, guys, that you can go into the challenges right now.
now, and you will get a free Team of the Season collectible that, again, will save you 16,000 coins. So especially if you have Jack Hughes, if you wanted to make Jack Hughes, you could knock off three Team of the Season collectibles right there. So you can save yourself about 46 to 50,000 coins by getting the challenges done and then the objectives, uh, which will obviously take some time there. So just keep that in mind um, because the objectives for Team of the Season uh, does look like you just have to play games. It doesn't. You don't need a Team of the Season card to get them. So you do get two at the end. So something to keep in mind as well because that'll save you about 50,000 coins. Now, I want to talk about the store real quick. First of all, they are just releasing insane amounts of packs and stuff to try and get you guys to dump all your coins and money. I would not spend any coins or money on this game with the state that it has been this year. I've been pretty firm on that. I haven't bought in packs since Team of the Year, and I really have no interest in it because I don't think that supporting the, this level of game and what we've gotten so far deserves it. That being said, I know everyone is going to ask about the 375,000 coins for the guaranteed Week 1 Team of the Season item here is the thing yeah a shot at dobson would be huge and it's going to cost you 560,000 coins to get a choice set anyways here's the issue if you go into the pack probabilities you have a 16 percent chance of really getting any of the ones that you would actually want meaning that you're almost guaranteed to get mctavish muller logan thompson so Again, just keep that in mind. Not worth it, in my opinion, at all. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for everything that you need to know about the Team of the Season event. I am back from Washington for this week, so I will make sure that I have all of the most up-to-date content and info for those drops as they happen throughout this week. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.